What is the real story of Tut's tomb? And can new clues help reveal its ultimate secrets? In a quest to find answers, Chris Naunton has traveled to the Valley of the Kings, where Carter made his original spectacular discovery. Inside the tomb, he notes something striking about the design. So one of the first things you notice when you enter this tomb, you come down the descending passageway and you need to take a right turn. And this is quite unusual for 18th dynasty tombs um, because in most cases, what you would expect of a pharaoh's tomb would be a left-hand turn. In ancient Egypt, the left was a symbol of masculinity. It was so important that the entrance to every king's tomb from Tut's dynasty involves an immediate turn to the left. The only other right-hand turn is in the tomb of Hatshepsut, a female pharaoh. So the question then is, if in the case of the tomb of Hatshepsut, a right turn means the tomb of a female pharaoh, should we be expecting here not the burial of a male king, Tutankhamun, but a female pharaoh instead? It appears King Tut's tomb was probably built, not for a man, but for a woman. The female clues do not end there. Dr. Yasmin El Shazli sees something intriguing about them. If you look carefully at the face, the faces on the stoppers of uh, these canopic jars, you'll notice that the portrait is quite different from that of uh, Tutankhamun. They look more feminine. Experts agree that the heads on Tut's canopic jars have features that are more like a woman than a man. And remarkably, experts are even finding female features on the most famous piece of Tut's treasure, his death mask. Normally, a king's mask would all be made out of the same materials. But Tut's mask is different. El Shazli reveals why. The, the face is originally separate from the headdress and they were welded together. So they are two different pieces. There is a further clue on the ears of the mask's headdress. The earlobes are very interesting because the ears were originally perforated. In three-dimensional art, men did not normally represent themselves with perforated ears. It suggests that the face itself did not originally belong to the rest of the headdress and that the headdress belonged to a woman. The pierced ears indicate that Tut's iconic headdress may originally have been made for a woman as were many other objects in Tut's tomb. The enduring question has been, who was she?